Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson. This is Maker Size. In this video, I'll show you how I build the carriage assembly for my lathe project. In the previous video, I showed you how I built the lathe bed for this project. Now we're going to go into a little bit more depth. We'll start with the carriage casting, which is the base. Then we'll move on to the cross slide, uh, then the compound swivel base, and finally the uh, compound slide, which is where the tool post mounts. This is the carriage casting. This is the foundation for the entire carriage assembly. And this is the pattern that I used to cast it. I made this pattern on my older table saw. I've got a little sled for it, and that allowed me to cut the channels down this part. You can even see some of the saw marks where you can tell that I nibbled away at the pattern. I think it's kind of interesting because you can see the same marks left by the saw in the finished cast part. I made the end parts by cutting about a three quarter inch piece of plywood just to fit down in that slot. And then I used wood filler just to, to round out the inside corners. That helps it mold better in the sand. Once I had the part cast, I used a hacksaw to cut off the sprue. I used a file and a rasp. Then I had to go through and scrape the different surfaces. I started out by scraping the channel that rides on the lathe bed ways. And then I scrape the elevated portion where you mount the clamps that clamp it onto the bed ways. I drilled and tapped the various holes for adjusting the, the jib, which is the little piece of quarter inch by quarter inch key stock that allows you to tighten it up onto the bed. I used a piece of one inch by quarter inch cold rolled steel cut to the width of the part and then I shimmed it up. Those shims allow you to get a really good fit with the bedways. The shims go in between the cold rolled steel clamp and the casting. The jib is a piece of quarter inch by quarter inch key stock that is dimpled uh, where the jib adjustment screws go. The jib adjustment screws are just these little pointed screws with a nut on them. They allow me to adjust the jib so that the carriage is tight on the bedways. Once the clamps are on the carriage base, you adjust the jib screws to get it to where it slides freely. It should slide with very little play over the portion where you mount it. You'll find that it'll either be sloppy or tight uh, on other portions, and that's because the bed ways aren't perfectly parallel. I applied the paint to the front of the bed ways, and that allowed me to see a difference. You can see here where the paint is pretty much untouched, but over here, you can definitely tell a difference. This is where the bed ways is too high, and so I had to scrape down that portion. Once you've got it all nice and scraped, you should be able to slide pretty much along the entire length without any binding. Then you need to mount the cross slide ways to the carriage base. You do that by first drilling and tapping a fastener on the far side of the carriage base, and that allows you to rotate the cross slide ways until they're perpendicular to the bed ways. I used a piece of angle aluminum, clamped it to the bed ways at perpendicular, and then kind of shimmed off of that to allow me to get my clamps in place. I pretty much just C-clamped it and took it over to the drill press to uh, match drill the holes for mounting the cross slide to the base. The remainder of the parts for the carriage assembly are the cross slide, the compound swivel base, and the compound. The compound swivel base and the cross slide allow you to adjust the compound cut for any particular angle. Both the cross slide and the compound go on the same way as the carriage. They both have clamps and they both have jib screws that allow you to adjust how tightly they fit onto the ways on which they ride. The cross slide feed screw goes into the slot that's in the carriage casting. Shaft collars bracket the cross slide, so that way the cross slide moves as the cross slide feed screw is moving in and out. Put a ball handle on the end of the feed screw. That allows you to move the cross slide in and out. The compound swivel base mounts to the cross slide. This part doesn't need to slide all that freely because these clamps allow you to really lock it down in place. So, I mean, you can hear that, right? 
I use a chisel, a rasp, a file, and a scraper to flatten out these parts. The process is basically the same for all these parts you've seen me flatten. I smear oil paint onto a reference surface. In this case, I use a roller to transfer that paint to, to the compound ways. And then I can see the high spots. The high spots are marked with blue paint and they let me know where I should focus my attention with the scraper. I go through and I iteratively knock down the high spots. When you're scraping, you leave behind little burrs. So you need to use a stone to go back and kind of knock down those burrs. That way, the next time you transfer, your part is resting only on the high spots, not the burrs. So this process is pretty iterative where you slowly scrape down the high spots until the part approaches the reference surface. I measured the clearance between a straight edge and the reference surface with a feeler gauge. This let me know how much I needed to try and reduce the height of those pads where the clamps end up getting mounted. And then I just filed down those pads until the feeler gauge was uh, sufficiently small. After I had the height pretty close, I needed to actually flatten that up. The file doesn't leave a smooth enough or flat enough surface to get a good uh, solid mounting of the clamps. So I used the surface plate as my reference surface, and then I just scraped down the pads until they were flat and ready for me to mount up the clamps. After I mounted the clamps, I needed to drill the holes for the jib adjustment screws. Fixturing these parts was really a challenge with my small drill press. I ended up using some angle iron, a bunch of C-clamps, even some wood pieces just to kind of give it stability. After I match drilled with a smaller drill bit, I used a larger drill bit to open up the compound slide. I then used a tap fed through the compound slide to tap the compound swivel base for the compound feed screw. I step drilled and tapped the holes in the compound slide for mounting the tool post. The tool post is made from a lawnmower axle. I filed down the top and the bottom flat so that I could drill, I think about three quarter inch holes in this axle. And then I used a file to square up the slot for the tool. And then I had to drill a hole in the end. I pretty much just had a bracket that I threaded to accept this um, part. And then I was able to fixture that bracket with the threaded insert into the drill press. And with that part held in that way, I was able to drill a hole. It's not really in the center, but it's close enough. I guess if I had a lathe, I could get it right in the center, right? Uh, anyway, it, it worked. Yeah, and so now I have a tool post. In the next video, We'll take a look at the lead screw and the apron. This is the part that allows the carriage to engage with the lead screw and to allow the operator to have the carriage traverse the length of the bedways. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. If you like the video, click the like button. Subscribe to Maker Size. Check out the first part of this project and some of the other videos on Maker Size, and we'll see you next time.